welcome to Stitch and Bear Time. My name is Leslie Winchester and this is Little Bear. He's tired, he's gonna go take a nap. And um, what we are gonna do is um, I am going to teach you how to put together Brucella kits. And the reason why I want to do this is there just aren't a whole lot of videos on it. Sorry, he's a five month old puppy, he's very bitey. Um, and so I wanted to show you guys how to put these kits together and um, He's gonna go take a nap and we're gonna get started. Okay, so for this video, we are actually gonna be putting together a stocking, um, which Priscilla is very well known for, is for their stockings. We're gonna to put together this stocking here and it's the Letters to Santa stocking and we're gonna make it for my dog, Little Bear. He's a five month old puppy, he hasn't had Christmas yet. Um, so we're gonna make his stocking first and then hopefully it goes well. I have done several Brusilla kits already. They actually haven't been stockings. I've done um, advent calendars and ornaments, um, and they turned out really great. I'll show you guys a picture of that, but I've never done a stocking, so you guys are gonna watch me do my very first one. Okay, so let's start by opening up our kit. So what I'm gonna do is look for my instructions. Very first thing. And for this kit, we have several pages of instructions here. Um, and in our next video, we're gonna go over how do you read these, um, how do you make sense of these. So for now, we're just going to take pictures of them because if you lose your instructions, guess what, not a big deal. You will have them on your phone ready to go and you can print them back out. So we're gonna put that to the side. Um, keep. The cardboard, I don't know what this is actually called. I'm gonna call it cardboard even though I don't think it actually is. Um, keep this because some kits require you to um, cut pieces out to give structure. One of the kits I'm thinking of is an airplane one and they had to cut out part of the airplane just to give it some structure. So these are great for that, keep them, don't throw them out. This part here is what the kit's supposed to look like. So obviously you're gonna keep this so you can have a reference point. Sometimes it helps you figure out what the instructions are trying to tell you to do. Um, other kits I've done, they've had more instructions on the back of the sheet. So definitely don't throw this away, always double check. Um, but I always like to keep it as a reference. Now we are left with our felt. Um, what I like to do with my felt is double check to make sure that all the numbers are here that match with our instructions. Um, if there are any pieces that are folded, like this one, that's going to be a problem when you put your kit together because you're going to see the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron my felt and we'll, we'll do that last. I'll show that last in this video. But um, what happens is if you don't iron this prior, you're gonna see these lines in your finished project and it's gonna bug you. So we'll take care of that, we'll get those out. Um, it's really not hard. I will go over how to do that and what to buy for it so you don't ruin the felt or the stamping on it. Um, it seems like we're gonna have to do that with at least, at least two of these, maybe just two. There isn't a whole lot of felt in this kit, which tells me it might be a quicker kit to do. Great, for my first um, stocking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've definitely done bigger projects with Busilla. They just weren't stockings. Okay, we're gonna put this to the side for now and I'll show you how to iron that. Last but not least, we have our thread. You can call it floss, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, and inside of our floss that is wrapped around it, we have our needles and then our sequence and our beads. I like to make sure I find my needles first because they're easy to lose. Um, the thing to know about these kits is they usually come with two needles. They come with the beading needle and the um, embroidery slash applique needle. Um, if you're confused as to which needle does what, just take a little bead and put it on the needle. The needle where the bead goes right through it, that's your beading needle easy way to figure it out. Um, so I'm definitely going to put this in my needle book pouch I have here. I got this off of Etsy. Obviously I have other needles in here. I have a pencil to help me mark off as I go along. I also use this to stuff. 
I think it works just fine. And then of course my little scissors are in here. So I'm going to put my needles in here in a minute. Um, and then I'll know exactly where they're at and I won't lose them. When it comes to your thread, I am going to organize all of these. I'll take them out one at a time like that and make sure I have the right number of thread that I should. In our instructions, we're gonna tell you how much thread you should have in your kit. If you are low on thread, it's actually not hard to go to a craft store and find the color that you need. Um, I don't freak out over that. But the way I'm gonna organize it, I'm gonna put it on this little cute sheep here. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done and it'll be all organized. And then these numbers here, I'll write them on my instructions so I know which color is where. It'd be very cute. So we will do that. And then of course, our sequence and our beads. Now, how do I organize this? Well, I also do diamond painting. So this is where I got the idea from. Um, I bought this little box off of Amazon and I put my sequence and my beads in here. Um, I also have my big scissors that I use to cut my felt. I have some baggies for smaller pieces if I'm working on it and I need to put it away. I had to make candles for an advent calendar and I kept all my pieces here and I kept my little candles in here before I was done to make sure I didn't lose them because they do, they are movable on my advent calendar. So that's how I made sure I didn't lose anything. Um, but yeah, that's how I do this. And that's what I'm going to do with my beads and my sequins. So we are about to start ironing our felt. I only have two pieces of felt I need to iron. It's my white and my um, dark green. That makes it easy. I've had to iron a lot of felt in the past. What I use is called non-stick heat pressing sheet. I know I'm doing this on my table. I'm terrible, guys. Um, I don't have an ironing board. This works fine, though. I've made it work. Um, so I have non-stick non-stick heat pressing sheet I got it from Amazon I actually found out about this through Google I was trying to figure out how should I iron felt because I wanted to get the folds out um, not too expensive you use them over and over and over again you only have to buy it once and it comes with three sheets I'm only gonna need two when we do this I start with it upside down and then I'm gonna take my sheet my other one my second one here I'm gonna put it on top there just like that and then I'm going to use uh, my iron next. And I am using this really old looking iron. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me move it closer. Yes, old school, <laughs> very much old school. Um, my dad gave me this for free <laughs> and it works extremely well. So I just kept it and used it and I'm not gonna buy a new one until it breaks. Okay, so I just finished ironing my green felt and it looks pretty good. I do still have a little uh, fold right here and right here. I'm not that worried about it though because I'm cutting that part out. Um, for the majority of this, it looks pretty straight and that's what I want um, for my project. And my, my stamp still looks good. I don't know if you can see that. See the stamp on there? It still looks totally fine. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna move on to the white and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just ironed the back of this felt. I'm about to iron the the front of it where the stamp is, that's always the part that makes me a little nervous. I haven't had anything, I'm about to jinx myself, knocking on some wood. I haven't had anything bad happen to my felt yet while ironing. Watch if that happens this time now that I said it. But um, this non-stick this non sheet actually works pretty well, guys, so it should, it should be just fine. So I'm just ironing the top, apply some pressure if you're having Part time getting a certain fold out. That happens. Sometimes you get those little resistant folds in there. Look at that. Beautiful, right? That looks beautiful. As you can see on this side, there's that fold there that I haven't done yet, and you don't see that over there. Cool, right? All right, we're going to just flip this around through the other side, and then we will move on. Okay. So we are done ironing our felt. I did do something that you're not supposed to do, but I know it'll be fine. Um, the white piece was so long that I did cut it in half at an appropriate place um, just to help me store this. So I cut it around here 
there's the top so obviously I didn't cut through anything important and this piece here has its number on the bottom it's number 55 this piece has its number right here number two all is good in the world I just need to be able to store it so I cut it at an appropriate place but usually per the instructions you do not want to cut anything out until you are at that part of your instructions so it was just a little something I had to do okay I put it all in my two and a half gallon size bag notice that the big pieces I did roll them um, as long as you make sure it doesn't get flattened so you don't have to re-iron it later it works great um, so we have this piece done I am gonna put my instructions in here and I am gonna keep this it's kind of like cardstock it's I don't know what to call it I'm gonna keep this piece in there as well in case the stocking asks for me to fill it with a harder kind of paper so all my instructions and everything are in here together I also put my sequins in my beads away and the way I know where my current project is I put all my current project right here um, and these are all my extra sequins and beads on this side so that's done um, I have all my needles in the little needle pouch so I got a few extra noodles in there. I organized my floss, my thread, however you want to say it. I have enough thread per the instructions, so I should be able to finish this project just, just fine without running out. Um, so I'm going to store that away as well. My uh, fiber fill, my poly fill, uh, I actually have a bigger bag of this. This is just my little, <laughs> just enough to do like pieces at a time in my project. But I do have a very big bag of this stuff. And um, I just found it off of Amazon. It was really quick. Let's see here. There we go. So you guys can actually see it. <laughs> it's a huge bag of it. It's going to take me ages to get through that. <laughs> so I just kind of carry it around like that. And then I have this little porcupine guy that I got from Michaels that holds all my extra um, safety or not safety pins, they're just pins. My, my little extra pins, my need pin things. And I'm gonna put them all in my tote bag, and that's how I will keep myself organized during this project. All right, guys, look who just woke up from his nap. Say hi, little bear. Okay, so everything is in our tote right now. And next time, we're going to actually start our project as far as stitching goes. Um, I will teach you how to read the chart, the instructions, and um, Little Bear, I don't know, maybe he'll take another nap. Maybe he'll chew. We'll be gone. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye. Say bye, buddy.